Hi and welcome to a quick tour of the new brewery garage on our first full brew day. We see this end, we have the kegs and the hand pump when we need it, gas and all those things. Uh, and then we move over to the brewery proper. So today we are going to be doing a very simple smash beer just to get the system running. Uh, we have the mash tun with a temperature sensor on the flow on the top and the thermo well down here. We have what's be the Herms tank, it hasn't got its coils in at the moment. We have the nice new shiny controller, which appears to be working. Yeast getting ready. Uh, the HLT stroke boiler is still controlled, old school. And it's over here. So getting all the water ready for a very simple brew day. Hopefully everything goes well. Oh, and there is our steam extractor to keep the rest of the family happy and to stop the house from smelling of beer. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to start brewing properly. The grain is in the mash tun and all with some salts. I'll leave the salts back in there as an experiment. I think I might have been adding too much when I was putting it into the HLT. Uh, we're doing a pumped underlet here, so we're going down to the pump from the HLT. Down there, under there, and back into the mash tun. I need to remember to open all the valves, otherwise this doesn't work very well. Excellent. Back in a minute when we actually mash set up. And we're back. And now we have the mash on. So we have the full system working now. It doesn't seem to be leaking too badly. So we have HLT full of work coming worked. And it comes out down this pipe, which is a bit too long. Uh, into the pump, back out of the pump, over into the Herms tank, through the tank, corners of the Herms tank, back out the top, through the flow temperature sensor, and back into the, the mash tub. Right, under control with the system running, appears to be working correctly. The mash is a little bit cold the first time, probably need to put the liquid in, the liquor in a bit warmer, but we'll see how it's up to temperature. And we'll see how that goes for a little while and come back and check in later. Okay, now that we're up to temperature, as you may be able to see from that, it's taken a little bit longer to get the mash up to the temperature I want it that I'd like. Um, I think I might have to adjust the pig tuning, oh, but that's for another day. So while we're here, close look at the thing that looks a bit strange on top this is a temperature sensor so what we have is we have camera fitting it spans out from 15 to 22 we have a T which has a, a one wire temperature sensor plumber's puttied into it back into the more 22 back down to 15 and in to what's actually the um, sparge system uh, the reason it goes up to 22 is the previous version I had, which was in 15 mil, actually had quite a lot of resistance to flow uh, because the temperature sensor took up most of the width of the inside of the pipe. So I've moved it up to 22 to try and reduce flow resistance there. Okay, I'm back again. And now we're set up to sparge. So very similar configuration to most of the previous ones. Out to the HLT, down through the pump and back in through the temperature sensor which really isn't doing anything now into the sparge ring and just so i show you what the sparge ring looks like you can see under there it's a ring of i think it's eight mil pipe with holes in it and we're off this is going to take a while it's going to be draining out into a bucket since we have no separate hlt and boiler we just have to go through a bucket in between So we're sparging away and while we're here, quick look at something that's uh, done. I've seen a few other people do this, uh, but this is a basically a rubber band. It's actually one of those loom band things the kids have millions of. Uh, used to mark where I'm trying to run off to on the site class. I think it's quite neat. Uh, stops me having to remember exactly where it is each time. Right, we've got the Wort in the boiler and coming up to temperature and just a quick couple of shots to show you the fume extractor hood to keep the family happy. So we start off with what's a big kitchen mixing bowl, uh, some ducting, an inline fan, 
And then we have now have the garage door open up for a nice and lovely day, venting the steam into the rest of the community. Odd thing here, actually used duct tape on a duct. Never done that before. Oil, so before it gets a bit rushed, let's have a quick look. Basically, well-known brew bucket that I won at UKNHC a couple of years back. Uh, a few modifications. Uh, we have a proper blow-off tube that goes into a small pot taped to one leg. Uh, I've left that tube on top, so I keep forgetting to put it in. Uh, this extra hole was for something I was trying to do a while back, proved unnecessary. And in the top here, we have a very long thermo well. Uh, recently I've been having quite a few stalled fermentations. I just wanted to check what the temperature was like all the way through the ferment deep inside the bucket. So add a quick thermo well and add another temperature sensor there. Doesn't seem to have been a problem. So I'm gonna to have to try other things see how it goes but there's the fermenter oh and we have a bit of padding tape to the outside just to hold another sensor okay now we're getting towards the end of the boil we've got the recirculation system set up okay so for the beer side we come out to the bottom of the uh, boiler below the uh, false bottom and the pump out the pump, plate chiller, out the plate chiller, back in through the whirlpool inlet valve on the or inlet connector. Uh, inside there, it goes into an elbow down to the bottom of the, uh, the um, uh, boiler, and then another elbow to get it going around to an angle. Uh, we should be going around in circles at the moment. Yep, we are going all around. You can see that before we steam up. Uh, we can go a fair bit faster than that if we turn everything up. Uh, on the other side, coming out the cold tap, this is not running yet, through the plate chiller, out of the plate chiller and into the mash tun to use the hot water to give it a good clean. I haven't really talked about what the beer is yet, so what we have here is basically a smash ESB, uh, just Maris Otter and some East Kent Goldings at 60, 20 and 5, nothing complicated. It'll be, some of it will go into a bottle, some of it will go into a bag in a box to be served off the hand pump down here at my summer beer and birthday and meat burning party in August. Okay, so we're cooling, we're cooling pretty fast. This is a probably overkill plate chiller for this setup. We can lose from boiling point to 20 in about six or seven minutes. Fermenter is ready to go. I've actually remembered to put the little tube thing in, which I've forgotten for the last two times, which is good. Uh, I've got it pointing down. One thing I learned the first time I used this, if you point it upwards, it fills up with yeast and is completely useless. Um, so hopefully everything works well this time. Okay, just finishing up for the day. I'm sort of cleaning loop going at the moment. So we have some hot water with some oxy in it, going around through the pump and back in through the recirc loop we have the yeast ready to go we have beer in the fermenter in the fridge all the sensors in place it's all sealed and not dripping it all shut up get it to pitching temperature and it'll be ready to go a few bits and pieces are being cleaned over here i sort of got to do the pop spider I've forgotten about that one it won't take very long to do excellent well i hope everybody enjoyed that and i will see you in another video